Hi, it's Sari. I am literally slouched on the couch. Hang on a second. Oh. Okay. So I just wanted to hop on because I did a post on Friday, I think it was, um, about similar to this title, which is mental health, not mental illness. And I just wanted to reiterate what I said, but on a video, because I know not everybody likes reading posts. And what I'm talking about or what I mentioned is I'd seen, I don't know if any of you had seen it, but on, on Friday during the day, on this morning was on. And there was a girl on there who was talking about her battles with, hi Denise, battles with her mental health. And it she was actually, I think, filming herself having panic attacks online to kind of raise awareness and all that sort of stuff. Now, in a way, it's really great. And I'm not against people speaking out, like people need to speak out. That is really helpful, that people speak out and get help is great. And it's also helpful sometimes just to feel or just to know that you're not the only one that can feel so overwhelmed or have panic attacks and all that kind of stuff. And there is some level of reassurance in that. I get that. But what I know now and the, and I know how it works and I also have experienced it firsthand. And I also know that there's a really fine line between us reading about and hearing about other people's stories and knowing that we're not alone. But I get frustrated with these programmes often because they do that bit and that's great. But they're not really giving anybody a real insight into what's going to change their lives. And just knowing that other people have suffered in the same way may be reassuring, but it isn't going to change your life. And so one of the things that I wrote in my post was about you know, why I would love it, I would absolutely love it if we could share more information. And that's why I wrote this post. So if you have seen the post or go and have a look on the page and I'd love you to share it because there's actually only a, a number, a small number of things that people need to realise to start getting some level of change straight away. And I said in my post that if I only had a minute to spare or a minute with somebody, like literally, like you've got 60 seconds, I would tell them two main things. And the two main things I would tell them is that they have innate well-being, that underneath all of that overwhelm, they are absolutely okay. Because people don't always realise that that's what they can access because they forget that it's there or they don't see it because their mind is so bombarded with worry and negativity. So that's the first thing, is that to let people know that they have innate well-being that is always there and doesn't go anywhere. The second thing is I'd want them to understand that their thoughts create their feelings and they're experiencing everything they're experiencing. All of those feelings of overwhelm are coming through their thinking. They're the two main things because they're the two things that people don't realise. And that's the part that kind of of the understanding that I teach is it's all coming from the inside out. And as soon as people start to get that, they they really start to get amazing change. And so seeing these things on the media and the press, and I've offered lots of times to write articles for people to spread the word and stuff, but and I understand why, but they're not that they're not going to be that interested in me sharing tips necessarily on how to um how to change your relationship with anxiety because the things that they print are more like the stories, you know, the drastic I can give them a drastic story about being hospitalized and all of that. And there's loads of things out there like that. And that's more of an interesting read to them, but it frustrates me because it's not actually always that helpful. And so I kind of see things in the media and in the press um a bit like um a bit like Googling your symptoms in a way. Like you might get some level of reassurance, but it won't be long before that then tips over into more anxious thinking or well, what actually if I'm a bit different and what if this doesn't work for me and what if, what if, what if? And that then becomes really unhelpful. So that's the bit that frustrates me a little bit because I get that we're trying to spread a message and it's really important that we do. But actually I want to be able to share more insight into what can actually change people's lives rather than, oh yeah, okay, you know, me I'm the same like that happened to me I have that or you know that's not necessarily that helpful for people and when I see these articles it was on this morning and then I saw something in the Manchester Evening News later on that day and I just wish they'd give people some level of insight into the how they can 
better their own lives because you know they could reach hundreds of thousands of people in an instant and give them some little insights to get them started on that journey and I just think it'd be so much better if we could do that rather than just going over the same stuff time and time again of how people are suffering how and and the reason I put this in the title is because we say that we're spreading the word about mental health yet there's never any mention about mental health it's all fixated on the illness and what's wrong with people, whether they're broken, how unfixable they are, and then suddenly, oh yeah, then I managed to change my life, and then, but no real kind of, I suppose, nothing for people to then understand how they go about doing the same. So so I just wanted to share that, and just like, if you know anyone who suffers and struggles, you know, then they're the messages you want to get across, that innately they're well underneath, and that it's their thinking creating their experience and their feelings, and that, you know, that's the beginning. That's the beginning of what can possibly be a really great journey into completely, you know, changing over. Um, so, so yeah, so it's, hang on, someone's just wrote a comment. Let me have a read. So I totally get what you're saying and thinking positively and challenging my thoughts do help to agree. But there's also medically diagnosable illness that I don't think should go disregarded. Much like you can't positively think better broken bone, you can't always positively think a broken mind. No, you're right, Lauren. I don't know how how many or if you've watched many of my videos um but and there's a there's a half an hour presentation actually pinned to the top of my page if you wanted to have a look but you see the difficulty is again I mean I could talk about this all night but we yes diagnosis can be helpful for people but actually no matter what diagnosis people have got Okay, so if they've been given any diagnosis, whether it be something, I don't know, like ADHD or autism or um, depression or anxiety or whatever it is, sometimes, again, it can be a relief for people to have a diagnosis, but then it's kind of that next step of, yeah, that's all well and good, but how does that person have a better quality of life day in, day out? And that's the bit where, you know, I don't, I don't, believe now as, as a therapist and somebody who had severe anxiety and has been was hospitalized with it so it was extreme that it's not something I was born with it's not something that happened to me as an illness it's something that was created through what I now know to be habitually overthinking absolutely everything for a long period of time where it just then gets overwhelming so you know and again I'm not adverse to you know people having um diagnosis or anything like that because again it, you know it's just part of our society it's the way we work but you know again I've had people coming to me or saying you know well I've got I don't know borderline personality disorder so can you work with me or can you not it's like well I can help you understand more about the nature of human thought and 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 how that kind of creates your experience day to day and actually whatever diagnosis you've got that will help you feel a bit better in yourself on a day-to-day -day basis whatever your diagnosis so again if somebody you know but then we can get fixated on the other side of that is you know I've also known people that have come to me that have been given a diagnosis who have actually done lots of things and started to experience a very different life through you know to hard work and change themselves and but then still remain fixated on this diagnosis I've also had people come to me who've been given diagnosis that I just wouldn't I can't see like it's not it doesn't doesn't appear it doesn't show to me because again people change and people adjust but it's important that we don't get fixated on on the words on the on the terms of what it is it's to me it's you know, when I was feeling really, really anxious, to me, I people could have given me 10 different names for what that was. To be honest, in the nicest possible way, I didn't care. I just didn't want to wake up feeling shit every day. And that's what understanding more about thought and human nature can really help with is, is not being scared of your feelings and your thoughts every day. Because ultimately, that's what then keeps people in a vicious cycle. Um, let's have a look. Um... Yeah, and it's not, again, it's hard for me to just explain in a brief live like this, but you'll see people that have been on, on my courses and people that have under, have started to learn about the three principles in lots of different ways, not just through me. Um, it's not about turning your thoughts into positive because I get that if you're in that place of feeling really overwhelmed, like if someone had said to me, oh, just think positive. You know, I've been in a place where I... I can see I've got a great family. I can see I'm really lucky and fortunate in my life. I've got an amazing child. I've got, 
you know, so much going for me. Like literally everything externally looks wonderful. But I've still been in such an anxious state that none of that, not that it doesn't matter, but I just can't see it. And it doesn't just automatically make you feel good. So I could sit there, you know, and sit there and think about all the things I should be grateful for and all the things that are wonderful in my life. But it doesn't stop. It doesn't make a difference if you're in that frame of mind and you're in that zone. So what made the difference for me was understanding more about the fact that that's just thoughts and that then creates those feelings. So it's not about making them positive because we're all going to have negative thoughts throughout our whole life. That's just part of being human. But it's about understanding more about how that works and then your relationship with those thoughts. So they're not as scary. They're not as overwhelming and you don't get stuck in the same way. But it's definitely absolutely not about changing them all into positives in fact I'd say the opposite anyone that says oh well all you've got to do is change it to a positive mindset then in the nicest possible way to me that's bullshit because it's not possible to go through life without negative thoughts that's like saying you know going through life and never ever having a virus or a bug or like it's just not possible so it's more about how we how we manage that and how we see that and that we don't get caught up in that so for me, in the past, when I was really highly anxious, it I mean, I still get anxious now, but it, it feels different because I don't, it's not as scary, I don't fear it as much, and I don't hold on to it for as long because I just don't see it the same because I know it's created from thought. And so that then becomes much easier. But, but yeah, so it's not about turning them into positives, absolutely not, because because we can't do that we can't control our thoughts as much as we want we think we can and we can try we can't you know they're going to come and go and it's about how much we hold on to them rather than let things go and realize that actually what they are and how they work rather than yeah we can't change them we can't turn it all into a positive it'd be great if we could it'd be so easy wouldn't it um but it's just not that easy so yeah so i just wanted to share that and i hope everyone's okay and i will catch up with you no doubt this week okay take care bye